In this video, we are going to talk about translations of graphs and what symmetry they might have. This goes back to probably work you started in Algebra 1, finished up in Algebra 2. So we've talked about parent functions. Given the graph of a parent function, you can graph variations on that function without having to actually calculate new y values by following a few simple rules for translations of graphs. A translation either moves the graph up or down or left and right. Reflections of the graph reflect the graph across a line. Let's talk about these two basic functions. Let's look at f of x equals x squared. That's our parent function for all parabolas. The vertex is at the point of origin, 0, 0. It opens up. It is an even function because it is symmetric about the y-axis. The other function, f of x equals x cubed, is the parent cubic function. So let's look at horizontal translations of these two parent functions. If you add or subtract from the x value, what I call inside the function, in other words, whatever is happening to your independent variable, if that independent variable is being operated on by some mathematic operation, here it's being squared, I don't care if we were taking the cosine of it, if we're inside the function and we add or subtract a value to that independent variable, for us here in the parent function it's x, then that is going to give us a horizontal translation. If it's added or if it's subtracted, we're either going to move the graph of this function to the right or to the left. Now, if we move it to the right, then we are going to have the difference between where we started with our independent variable, which is at zero for our parent function, y equals x squared. We started here at the point x equals zero. The minus a says that we took that x coordinate and we moved it a distance of a. The minus says that we moved it to the right. So the difference between the right horizontal translation and the left horizontal translation, the minus means difference, difference from where we started. And difference is movement to the right. And that's why if we have movement to the left, it looks like, once we've cleaned up the operation that we've done, it looks like a plus the distance a. Well, here's what's actually going on in f of the quantity x plus a. It's the difference in where we started at zero going in the negative direction a distance of a. Mathematically, when we clean that up, it looks like f of the quantity x plus a. That's why it is, in essence, a horizontal translation of your graph to the left. We can see that these two things are true on our other parent function as well y equals the quantity x minus positive a, we're moving in the positive direction, a distance of a, then that's why it is a translation, a horizontal translation to the right. Here it is y equals x minus negative a quantity cubed, and that's why it is a movement to the left. So there's horizontal translation. Let's talk about vertical translation. I find that students don't have near as many problems with vertical translation as they do with horizontal translation. The one thing that you need to look for here is if you add or subtract from the function value, from the dependent variable here, for us the dependent variable is y. If you add or subtract from that value, this only affects what's going on in your dependent variable. Here is the original function f of x. There's your parent function. Nothing's happened to it. It has not been horizontally translated. The plus 2 is going to be applied after whatever horizontal work that you've done. So it only affects the dependent variable, the output. 
All right, so we are going a distance of A in the positive direction. This is the positive Y direction. Here we are going a distance of A in the negative direction. Here's the negative Y direction. So it basically just picks up your graph and moves it up or down. Vertical translation, very straightforwardly. We are either going in the positive direction from where we started or in the negative direction from where we started. And you can see this is true also on this parent function. So vertical translation I find that students don't struggle with very much at all. Reflections. Reflections, we have to be very careful about how we talk about reflections. A straightforward reflection of an original parent function f of x. If we just take the original parent function y equals x squared or y equals x cubed and there is no vertical translation there's no horizontal translation it is the parent function if we put a negative out in front of it that negative is saying everything that was positive is now negative. So in essence, if you take a parent function and slap a negative sign in front of the entire parent function, all it does is say whatever positive outputs you have, now all of those outputs are negative outputs. So it's basically just a reflection over the x axis because everything up here is positive outputs, everything down here is negative outputs. So it's a negative output for all input values of that parent function. So in essence, plugging a negative out front where it applies to the entire function is a reflection over the x-axis. Let's talk about putting that negative value inside of the function operation. Here our operation takes everything that was a positive x. Here are all positive x values on the parent function y equals x squared. If I put a negative inside that operation, y equals negative x quantity squared, this is telling you that everything that was an original positive value you're now making it a negative value. So let's say x equal 2. In the parent function y equals x squared, when I put the value 2 in there, I get the value 4 out. But when I put the value positive 2 into this function, the output that I'm going to get at positive 2, I'm still at an input of positive 2, the output I'm going to get is the output that I would get at negative 2. And at negative 2, my output on this function is positive 4. So I would still get positive 4. Because this is an even function, Putting a negative inside that parent function is not going to change anything about its graph. But that's not true here. Let me clean things up a little bit. Not true here on this parent function. If I put a positive 2 into this function, it yields me right here a positive 8. But if I put a negative 2 into this function, it yields a negative 8. So on the parent function, there's the output at negative 2. So in the same vein that we were talking about the other function, for this function, if I put the opposite of the input value, into this odd function, I'm going to get the output that I would get at negative 2, not at positive 2. So this is going to give me at positive 2 the output that I would have gotten at negative 2. So that's why when we 
reflect things across the y-axis, when we put that negative inside the operation next to our independent variable, in essence, it becomes a reflection over the y-axis. We've already talked about this. I covered this whenever we were talking about the parent function, parent even function, and the parent or a parent odd function. When we have an even function, putting the negative out front, a reflection over the x-axis will take everything and just reflect it over the x-axis. But a reflection over the y-axis for an even function, let's just write this down, for even functions, no change in the graph. For an even function, when we do a reflection that is inside next to the independent variable. For an even function, we better put parent function in your notes. This reflects over x-axis. For an odd function, still reflections over the x-axis and the y-axis, but we will get a change in the graph for odd functions. So there is reflections, symmetry, and horizontal and vertical translations. Come to class next time and we will work homework problems.